Hi everyone and welcome to Building It Back and once again welcome to day two of the Dance Teacher Web Live virtual conference. So this seminar we're going to focus big time on how we're going to build back and get back uh, what has been lost, right? So we're all kind of in that same area where we need to try to re-engage our customers, get them back and and bringing in new customers. So our seminar today, the first thing we're gonna talk about is reconnecting with your customers, yeah? The ideas and tips on ways to be able to reconnect with them. Because, you know, as that, as that saying goes, you know, out of sight, out of mind. So we wanna try to get back into the front and center of that my of your customer's mind. The other one is best places to find new customers, right? We, we gotta go fishing again and, and find those sweet spots where we can bring people in and refill that pool and get new customers in. The next thing is selling and upselling, now more than ever. You're right, we gotta train our front desk staff or if you're answering the phone, you've gotta have that entire sequence how you're going to sell and upsell very strongly in place and then the last thing we're going to want work on is finding new revenue streams and uh, where you can save because you know it's not just making more money it's also finding ways to save money so we're going to cover all of those in this seminar and we know you know <clears throat> the reality is most of us have been closed, at least our bricks and mortar place during a big portion of this time. Some of you out there may still be closed as far as that goes, or you may be slowly opening. Uh, most of us were doing transferring into some kind of virtual learning for our students, whether it be Zoom or live streaming through Vimeo, different platforms. We, we had to find ways to try to really connect with our students, even in a platform where maybe we're not used to. But uh, we, our, our close signs were on our businesses, right? And, and even though we were closed, yes, we're still awesome. And, and all of you out there, as you continue to work through this, you were showing your customers how you're able to still move forward. As I said in the opening uh, montage that, that we had before the whole event started, you know, it's, it's that Marine saying, right now we have to adapt and just find a way to make it work, right? We gotta adapt and overcome, adapt and overcome. And folks, the reality of it is, we still may be in a situation where we're still gonna have to adapt and overcome. But through every adversity lies equal or greater opportunity, uh, as the great Dale Carnegie uh, said, and it's true because, you know, the reality of it is, we are gonna have to probably still find ways to navigate through, find ways to adjust our schedules, find ways to adjust how we're going to continue to find new revenue streams. So we're closed, however, we're gonna be opened. And uh, we just started, just some good news, we started our summer programs in the beginning of July. We transitioned a bit from what we were doing, from having more group classes to more private lessons or semi-private lessons of two or three students in a studio together where they could get together with friends. So things like that we're gonna talk about, we're gonna think a little bit, not just as I like to say outside of the box, but we gotta think of outside the whole darn box factory. We have gotta really be sharp and on point as to what we're gonna do and how we're going to proceed. So let's first start off in-house. Let's talk about customer re-engagement. Yeah, it's, it's not customer engagement, but it's customer re-engagement. We've got to find ways now to reach out and pull in our customers because there is going to be a certain amount of contraction. I think we all know that. Some people are gonna be comfortable and feel it's safe to get back into the water again. Some are not. So we have to be ready to find ways to engage and let people know, hey, we can offer you this, we can offer you that. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to re-engage? We're going to do it many different ways. Not one, as, as this slide says, one size does not fit all. Folks, don't think for a second that you are annoying or somehow oversaturating your customers. They want to hear from you. Even if they don't know they want to hear from you, they want to hear from you because they need to know what's going on. 
So our strategy has been very strong in all three of these, email campaigns, phone calls, and hard mailings. So let's start with that first one, email campaigns. Email campaigns, you know, it's a very easy way to connect with your customers. However, not everybody reads their emails. We know that. So we've got to find ways to connect with them regularly. The customers right now, I think, need to be sent regular emails. Now, I've said this before at another seminar that I did, but I want you to focus on these uh, three topics here. I want you, right after this seminar, to think of three things. And these are subject lines that you're going to have that you're going to send to your customers. And then you're going to build a simple, not long, maybe you know, a, couple of, a couple of sentences that, or a paragraph of what it is. So subject line number one. You ready? Subject line number one, safety first. Safety first. And now you're going to build an email all about safety procedures that your studio is putting into place. So the subject line, safety first. That'll, that's going to give you stimulation and food for thought on what to say. The second one is good news. Good news, yes, those of you that have taken my seminars before know I'm a big fan of good news. No one ever gets an email and says, I've got no interest in that when they see good news as the subject line. Good news makes people feel good. People want good news just in case you hadn't noticed. So what's good news? Good news could be you're adding a new faculty member. Good news could be you know, something about when you're going to be starting your fall classes, how you're going to be doing some certain things at your studio, maybe new programming. And then the third subject line is going to be important studio updates. And this can also be about maybe uh, some kind of uh, schedule change that you're going to be doing, enhancements that you had. Maybe, you're, maybe you've done s some new renovation to your studio. So those are the three subject lines, safety first, good news, important studio updates, three emails. Then I want you to go back and start over with safety first and do another three emails of safety first, good news, and important studio updates. So now you've got six, six emails that you're going to be sending out to your customers, all right? So you're going to be sending out these six emails, two a week over the next three weeks, or if you want, you could do three a week, but at least two a week over these next two to three weeks, and you're going to spread them out and, get in the, and start to get people understanding exactly what you're doing. They want to hear from you. Phone calls is the next one. Now, you know, depending how many students you have, this could be, I know, a laborious task. It, it is for us, however, Get on the phone and calling people up and letting them hear your voice and letting them hear your concern and letting them hear how important they are is, is very important for them. Think about it for a second. One of the big advantages that we have as small business, small community businesses is we know our customers. So picking up the phone and talking to them is a great way to connect. As a matter of fact, I'd even say go a little, take an, even another step and, and maybe even go back a, a year, two years and call all of those customers over those periods of time and reconnect and talk to them and let them know what you're doing. And maybe, you know, you're going to offer some some more private lessons, which is maybe a little bit out of what you normally do. So think about that. You could be talking to them about that as well, one-on-one. -on -one. But find ways to call your customers, talk with them. They want to hear from you, whether it be you personally. Ideally, it would be great if it's you personally, but if, you, if it's too big and you need your front desk staff and people you know who are very personable, who can talk to people, reassure them what you're doing, let them understand you're open for business, now and that you are ready to rock and roll. And the last one is a hard mailing. Uh, you know, a lot of people think, hey, junk mail, people just throw that stuff away. But people are home more right now, and, and they're more invested, I think, in, in being home more. A lot of people are working from home. I think a lot of people, uh, just even some recent studies have shown that some hard mailings have been working even more effectively. And again, maybe on the outside of the envelope, you put good news from your studio or important updates from your studio or special message from your studio or special offer from your studio. Get them back in, right? We want to find ways. And again, one size does not fit all. Somebody may respond to the email. Somebody may be more responsive to a phone call. Somebody may be more responsive to a hard mailing. I know this, after 33 years in business, 
I don't think there's ever been a time when I've called a customer and they were like, well, don't call me anymore. People feel like calling, they know calling is probably, I think out of all the mediums, calling is, is the most, I, and I feel one of the most valuable and precious because what's our most valuable commodity, folks? Time. And it takes time to pick up the phone and talk to somebody. And people know, hey, if you invested some time in talking to them, well, you know what? They're going to take some time and invest in your business. So these are all ways that we're going to try to really connect with our current customers or, in some cases, reconnect. But that also brings up <coughs> another, another thought here that I really want you to, to grasp onto, and that is that don't give up on past customers, re-engage them. And I want to read uh, something that, that's very interesting that was just put out recently that they talk about the life cycle of, of you know, of a um, customer marketing to customers. And traditionally, most major companies uh, were, you know, the acquisition stage of getting, finding, and getting new customers uh, was kind of the, the busiest part and where most companies put money into their marketing funnel. However, uh, now the majority of marketers uh, interviewed in a recent study just recently um, by marketing survey said retention and re-engagement is now the key focus. The key focus. So how do we re-engage with those people? You know, by communicating with them, maybe offering them some kind of an incentive to come back. Again, I'm not recommending or saying that you should give away the farm, but maybe some kind of a perk. It doesn't always necessarily have to be a discount off classes. Maybe you, there's some kind of a t-shirt giveaway. Maybe there's some kind of a, a leotard giveaway, tutu, maybe some tights, maybe something that you can have to give to them that's, that's going to be perceived as a value. Or maybe you just you know, waive your registration fee for this year. Find ways to re-engage with your customers. Here's something to think about. Think about just businesses that you do business with, right? Let's just say it's a local restaurant that you go and have a, a dinner at. And you, know, you haven't been there for four or five months, maybe even longer, maybe a year. And out of the blue, you get a, an offer from them. And it says, you know, we miss you. Just wanted to let you know we're back, in biz we're back open for full business. Uh, we'd love to have you come, bring in this coupon, and receive $25 off your next meal. Or buy one meal, get one free. What do you think? I'd be willing to bet you probably would put that aside and say, you know what, I'm going to use that because I love that place, but I just, you know, I got busy and I didn't really have time to go. Don't forget, most, most people probably stopped doing business with your studio, not because they didn't like what you were doing, but because they got busy. Or their child said, oh, no, this year I want to do blah, blah, blah instead of dance. Well, maybe now dance is, is kind of something they would like to do. Sometimes it only takes the parents to, to go up to the child and say, hey, Susie, would you like to go and take dance classes again? Uh, and Susie says, scratches her head, well, uh, uh, yeah, OK, good. And they take the coupon in, and away you go. It's much easier. Think about uh, acquiring new customers, right? We have our customers here. Then we have our pending customers. Then we have our past customers, then we have people that never even heard. And when you're mining for, for new customers, it's much easier to get somebody to do business with you that has already done business because there's already a trust factor, there's already a no factor, you know, people know what they're getting into when they come back and do business with you. Prospecting in that area, you're more likely to acquire those customers that did business with you, and it's, it's much harder to get people to do business with you who have never done business with you because they just don't know who you are. And so, you know, they're looking around. Then in, most, in the, most of those cases, those people are thinking, well, what's in it for me, and how can I trust you? Who are you? How do I know you? So that's something to think about, really re-engaging those new customers. And the other th past customers, and the other thing is, is update everything at your studio, everything. 
And if you think everything's updated at your studio, please double check and triple check. Um, I hope, I hope this isn't anybody out there watching, but I got an email back yesterday from a studio, an autoresponder, and it said something about, you know, thank you, we're on our Easter break and we'll be in touch with you shortly. Uh, I've also called studios and when I answer the, when I get their answering machine, they're talking about the Christmas break or they're talking about their nutcracker or holiday show or talking about registration for, you know, their, their, uh, 2020 winter event. Double, triple check everything, folks. People are gonna be looking to see if you are up to date and current with what you're doing. When people are browsing around, they're calling, they're going on social media, they're going to your website. If they see stuff that looks like it hasn't been updated, they're gonna assume you're not fully functional and you're not ready to rock and roll. This is a little thing that makes a big, big difference. Now look, this, this can very easily fall through the cracks. Don't think for a minute that, that it doesn't. I, I'd be willing to bet that some of you out there that are watching are probably gonna go and double check just to make sure that everything is current and good. I hope, I hope you do because it's an easy thing. But you know, create a calendar at your front desk on every Monday, right, check the answering machine, check the website, check any autoresponders, check everything, you know, and update it and do it. That should be like to do Monday morning, either your front desk person or yourself. You're gonna take a half hour, it doesn't take long, you're gonna take a half hour, make sure everything's current and keep moving forward, you know? I even think it's not a bad idea right now for your studio answering machine when somebody calls, say, you know, they, the answer would be, uh, thanks for calling, uh, we're this week, August, whatever, what's this week, August 6th? Yeah, this week, August 6th, we're open from blah, 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 blah. And then next week, this week, August 13th, we're open from, and let people know your hours of operation and let people hear that, wow, they're really current, they're up to date, they're on top of this. Right now, we need to be, we need to have our A game on, folks. We need to be right there. So stay very, very current. Again, and the per anybody answering the phone, make sure that they know exactly what's happening with programming. And I know some, some of you, some studio owners I've spoken with, they're still kind of a little up in the air as to when they're gonna have their start date in September or maybe August and you, you maybe wanna push it back. Try to set a date, but you know, like anything, it's a date, but that date has to be fluid this year. You may have to go back a little bit, and if you do, you do. The world's not gonna come to an end, but let's stay current in everything that we're doing. That's really, really important. All right, so we've talked about our current customers and prospecting, maybe our past customers, but now let's talk about and explore finding new customers. Uh, there's a lot of people that are right now searching for New, for something to do with their child. Uh, and right now, people are really invested in looking for something that's open, something that's, that's at least looking like some normalcy in their lives, right? So these are some of the places right now that we're looking for, looking for new customers. And some of these we've had in the past and they've worked really, really well. So the first one there I recommend that you do is if you don't have it already, I'm sure many of you do, but you may wanna update your, uh, if you type in Google My Business, update your listing on, on that because Google loves it when people keep updating. Update your hours, make sure that your website, it clicks to your website and everything is functioning really, really well with that. So Google My Business and just scrolling down there to the bottom, YouTube advertising through Google, you know, if you have a Google Ads account and I rec strongly recommend you do it. And I, I know some of you out there may be thinking, well, I'm not computer savvy. The, ladies and gentlemen, this is so easy to implement and Google can help walk you through it. Part of it is just putting in your studio URL and it'll start populating things. And you can just, it, you can draw a little circle, right? It'll tell you, you want these ads to go to a 10 mile radius, a five mile radius. And it really makes it very, very easy. So Google people 
right, are just getting on their phones and, and looking for stuff or on their computer, make it easy for people to find you. And the other nice thing about Google is, you know, it creates a little map so the people can see exactly where you are and how far the driving distance is from their house to your studio. So Google, my business, Get that implemented right away. The other one is a Facebook ads account. Those of you that have done my seminars in the past know that I'm a big fan of pay-per-click with Facebook ads. Um, again, it's very easy to implement. You can get very tricky on how, you know, with remarketing and sending anybody that comes to your studio, you can then do ads uh, to them. And when I say your studio, your studio uh, website, you, you can follow them along with ads. That's a little more complicated. You might want to get somebody to come in and help you with those type of things. But I can tell you there's a lot of people out there uh, that are looking for additional work who specialize in SEO, which is uh, search engine optimization. Also a lot of people out there who can help you with Facebook ads accounts. Facebook itself will also help you with some ads account, with, with your ad account. You have to have a, a certain amount of spend, but again, this is, a, this is a really simple thing to implement and put into your studio. And obviously, Instagram uh, advertising. Uh, you, if you have an Instagram account, you can do Instagram advertising. And typically, Instagram and Facebook, you know, the, they send the ads back and forth, and it's very easy to populate your ads through both of those. When you set up your ads account on Facebook, it'll ask you if you want to show these ads on Instagram. And yes, you absolutely want to show them on Instagram. Uh, Eventbrite for special events and trial lessons. I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about that, but that's something also that's very, very good. Those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's Eventbrite and you can post events. You can post classes. As long as you're not charging, it's free of charge to you. Let me say that one more time. As long as you're not charging, it's free of charge to you. And no matter where you live, it works. It works because it's going to help tell people what you're doing. So let's get into Eventbrite for a second. Oh no, wait, before I go to Eventbrite, I want to talk about your website for one second. So your website, please make sure, again, that everything is up to date. However, have calls to action on your website and easy for people to connect with you with your website. So this is our website here and you can see at the top, uh, this top mod part of the website is the same on every single page. I don't care what page you go to, it's the same. The phone number's there, people can click on it. If they're looking on a mobile device, they can click on that phone number, it'll automatically call. That other one up on top I think is very important, request a free trial. Click on that, they can either call the studio, there's two little buttons after that, call the studio, or there's a simple little form for them to fill out their name, their child's name, age, class, submit, and, and contact information, their phone number, email address. Click on it and, get, and, and they can contact you. Make it easy for people to connect with you the minute they come to your website. Because if we go back one slide, all of these, all of these, Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and not so much Eventbrite, but those other ones, what are we trying to get them to do? Well, maybe it's an ad that we're trying to get them to either fill out a form on one of those platforms or call us directly from those platforms, but a lot of those platforms are gonna send them to your website. So our website has to have very easy navigation, very easy calls to action, and again, on the top of the page, your phone number's right there, easily displayed. There's a little map up there for them to, to see where you are in, in relation to where they live, and that last one, request a free trial, a big one, because we want to keep hammering that, and that top, that top navigation should be the same on all of your pages, because once some, when somebody's looks at something and they decide, you know what, I'm gonna give these guys a call or I'm gonna see about scheduling a class, you wanna be able to have them do it right from that page. So let's now talk for a second about Eventbrite. For those of you that have done my seminars in the past know I'm a big, big fan of Eventbrite. I think it's fantastic. Now, here's how Eventbrite works. People in your community go and sign up for Eventbrite. Let's just say, you know, I'm a dad and I have two kids, one eight, one ten, 
and I'm looking for kids activity and I also like to do sporting things, hiking, biking, I'll sign up as a dad or a mom for a free account on Eventbrite. And I'll put my name, I'll put what I'm looking for, my interests, uh, activities that I'm interested in, kids' activities. Maybe, and if somebody puts kids' activity, doesn't necessarily have to be dance, but kids' activity. But you can, they, some people can drill down and say, you know, looking for arts, looking for this, looking for special events. And they then click a button, and now they're gonna get notifications from Eventbrite when something is happening in their community. And the community can be, again, the, the people can, can draw a circle. Hey, I'm willing to go drive 10 miles, 15 miles. If you're in a more rural area, people are probably willing to drive 30 miles. So the, the users can figure out what their parameters are. So now, us, as business owners, can post an event on Eventbrite, and Eventbrite will ping all of the people in their area, letting them know, hey, this free event is now happening for, uh, for your kids or yourself, whatever it happens to be. In this case, we're looking for the, to connect with the parents, letting them know we have an activity for their child. You, now, there's a couple ways we've used this. You can do a free week of dance and music lessons, right? If you, if you teach, we have music lessons, but just let's say dance lessons. You're gonna do a free week of dance lessons. And you have your schedule, and you let people come in. It's no charge. If you don't charge, it costs you nothing. If you are gonna charge people, then Eventbrite will take a piece of that action, right, for you to sell a ticket or a pass for somebody to come. We found this to be the most effective if you do it for free, all right? Very, very effective. This event that we're seeing, I hope you can see this slide really clearly. This is an event that we're gonna be doing on September 12th, Saturday, September 12th. It's our free day of dance and music lessons. So we have a schedule put together and you can populate the schedule um, over there with a little red button that says, remind me, you can, uh, if, if the event's not selling tickets yet, then remind me, somebody can click on that and it'll remind them when the tickets go on sale. Because even though it's free, people have to buy a ticket or sign up for a ticket for your free event. So here's where it gets really good. Anybody that signs up for your event or class that's free, you get their contact information. You can set up the form, and again, this is very, very easy, very easy for you to set up. The form we set up has their name, their address, their email, their phone number or cell phone, their child's name, what classes their uh, child's age, what classes they're interested in, and that user then hits submit and you get, you get a lead through that action. So this is a free day of dance and music lessons, uh, and this year we're really pushing the idea that space is very limited uh, in each class. So once these spaces fill up, they fill up. In the past, when we've done this, it's worked extremely well. And let me show you a little data. So this is inside the dashboard. You'll, you can go in and it'll show you exactly the kind of analytics that you're getting. And you'll notice last year that we did this event, we sold 86 tickets. Then we did one in that June where we sold 57. And then another one where we sold 30, another 85. These are new people that came to our studio through this event. And this cost us zero to market. It didn't cost us a penny, folks. We got, look at all those leads that we got. I don't know about you, but I like that. That really works for me. And most of the people that came in stayed. Most of them came in and stayed. Uh, each year, you know, we, we've done this. We started doing this three years ago. I just took a little snapshot of this. The, these numbers are the same every time, right? And so far, we've just launched the campaign to go live, uh, as a matter of fact, this past Monday. 
I'm, I'm willing to bet that this could be our biggest year ever. We may even have to spill it over to Sunday and split it up into two events, right, which we're, we're talking about doing depending how the, how the funnel rises over this next couple of weeks. And again, if you're doing something like this, I recommend that you launch this kind of a campaign, if you can, at least a month in advance. Or, you know, if your schedule is going to be starting soon, even with two weeks, you can do it. The, you can see one of the years our numbers were down just a little bit, and we started it later that year. Yeah, we started the campaign. We launched it a little later. We wanted to check it out. It did, was not nearly as effective. But the more time you have, the more leads you get. Now, here's the other great part is when somebody fills out the form, you have all their contact information. Don't let it go with this. Yeah, once we get a lead in, we immediately have the front desk call that person and say, hey, we see you're registered for the, uh, the day of dance and music. We see your daughter, son, wants to take uh, hip hop, jazz, ballet class, or maybe they're just signed up for one. Here's an opportunity for you to say to them, well, did you know you, know, you can take as many as you want there's also another class right after for that age bracket. And build your schedule. This has to do nothing to do with your regular schedule, but when you're building your day of dance, in, in our case, dance and music, you know, make it so that you have a jazz for seven to nine year olds, a ballet for seven to nine year olds, a tap for seven to nine year olds, and anything else that you have for seven to nine year olds. Let them take a couple of classes in a row. Um, on this day, we, I, in the last year when we did it, we had over 80% of the people signed up for lessons. The people and the people that didn't, we continued to market to them, and we will continue to market to them because remember, you're capturing all of their contact information. This is a new lead that you have, and think about it. Maybe they're not a, a red hot lead, but you know, if somebody's going to put in their name, their address, their phone number, their email, their child's name, they have some interest in it. So don't you know? Don't get discouraged if somebody doesn't sign up right away. Keep working them, right? So this this is about creating a, a funnel that really is going to work to build up new customers, but I think you can, I think you'd agree those are pretty good numbers for, um, for something that cost us zero. Keep this in mind, folks. How many times have you spent money and didn't get it, or you felt like you didn't get, or maybe you didn't get really any money, any return on investment? This is, this is an incredible ROI because we spent nothing and we got all of these new customers. Now, how do we multiply this? So when they come to that free day of dance, we give them a coupon. Hey, look, we have these coupons here. It's, a 50, it's $50 that you can save off your lessons, but you're gonna take this coupon and give it to a friend. If your friend signs up, you'll get $50 off and your friend gets $50 off. So now we're gonna start multiplying things instead of having, you know, out of these 80 some odd new customers, you know, we, we got maybe 60 some odd, close to 70 to sign up. If we can even get 30 of those people to refer new people, now we've, we've grown even more. So this is a really effective way. And what better way to sell your studio but to get people in and to take your classes, right? That's, that's our selling, that's, that's the ticket right there. That's the golden carrot. Hey, this is, you like this? This was fun? Yeah, well wait until you see what it's like to dance here all year. You're gonna have so much fun. You're gonna wanna do it again and again and again. So let's get them into the studio. And again, these classes, you know, instruct your faculty. These classes have to be a blast. Even if you have a little bit more advanced ones, a blast. Typically what we found, these are more beginner recreational kids. So these classes have to be fun. Your faculty has to bring their A game. They've got to be engaging. They've got to make it fun. They've got to say the kid's name in that class two or three times. And, and when they come out, they talk to the parents and, and really engage the parents and help them find the best spot for that child that's taking that class. So Eventbrite, check it out. I've got nothing to do with the company. Maybe like, gosh, Steve is really promoting them. But what I really love about it is it costs you Nothing. 
and right now, marketing that doesn't cost you anything that works, I really want you to try it. I really want you to, to get involved with it. And I'd really be interested to hear on some of your results on how you're doing with it. All right, so enough about Eventbrite. <laughs> Let's talk for a minute about old school here, all right? We're gonna talk about postcard mailings. And again, I talked a little bit earlier that there have been some studies just recently showing that people are opening mail more often. We'll think about a postcard. A postcard, people don't even have to open it at all. This is promoting, again, our day of dance. We're gonna do that, but we're also gonna tell people, hey, if you can't make the day of dance, you know, give us a call and you can come in and try any class you'd like to free of charge. Postcards are something that people can look at real quick and decide, yes, I like it, yes, I'm interested in this, or they throw it in the garbage. Now, a lot of these are gonna get thrown in the garbage when you do a mailing, I'm not gonna lie, but if you can connect with people through the postcard, you've got, again, a, another funnel of getting in new customers. And here's something to think about. Uh, people, uh, even in our community, recently we've been finding that a lot of people are moving in and moving out. And a lot of times, it's hard to reach those new people in your community. So any postcard mailing that you do, make sure that the postcard on top says, let's just say you're mailing it to you know, Steve Sirico at, at my address. Make sure that they put on that top, Steve Sirico or current resident, or current resident. So now, even if you're, you've moved, and now I've moved from that address, however, Amanda with three kids who love to dance just moved into the neighborhood. Or Amanda with three kids that don't know what to do, but Amanda now picks up your card, sees that thing and says, hey, you know what? I'm gonna give these guys a call. You've been able now to connect with someone who's new to your, na to your community that maybe you wouldn't have even known was there, yeah? So I still like hard mailings. I still like postcards. We're gonna do it uh, in, in the end of this month. A postcard mailing's gonna be going out. Uh, for us, we try to do it in, in zip codes in our area that reach out to a 10 mile radius. They've been effective for us. I, again, two other little pointers with postcards that, that I would recommend. Promote something. Don't just say, you know, come in and, you know, or show your schedule and not have a definitive call to action. So a couple tips for postcards. One, a call to action. If you don't have a free day of dance, make up a free, you know, a free month of dance. Not that they can take dance for a month, but they can come in and try any class they'd like to during the month of September, just as an example. Or another call to action, bring in this card and save, you know, uh, will waive your registration fee, right? Um, any kind of promotion, there's, there needs to be a call to action, and that call to action needs to be time sensitive. We're not just looking to do brand awareness, we're looking for get in here and become our customer, right? If it, if it doesn't bring in customers, my opinion, it's not worth spending the money on. We want things that are gonna bring in customers. Now postcards, you know, it, the making of postcards isn't necessarily the expense. Where you're gonna start getting expensive is the postage, right? So if you're gonna send out 5,000 of these, you know, you gotta pay the postage, and this particular postcard's oversized, so it's 44 cents to send it, so 44 cents times 5,000, you can do the math, it, it gets a little pricey, plus you have to make them. So you need to know, bottom line, that this postcard is gonna bring in X number of dollars. If it doesn't, then don't do it, but I, again, I think not one size fits all. Postcards are a great way to connect. Now, the other thing is to do is to do just a regular envelope and a mailing that you can maybe print in the studio, envelopes that you could print in the studio, but keep in mind that kind of a, a mailing, the postage is a little bit more. All right, so now we've talked a little bit about getting people in, re-engaging, bringing new customers in. But folks, that's, that's really just part of the battle. As a matter of fact, if we're playing a football game, we're just at halftime, right? When, when we get, uh, we got all this people that are raising their hands and say, yes, I'm interested, yes, I wanna hear from you, yes to this, yes the other thing. All right, we're at halftime. 
Now, the second half strategy, we've got to now have another strategy, is to sell. We have to have our front desk staff, again, understanding our program, understanding the benefits, and understanding how to sell. If they don't know how to sell, I, the money you've spent on marketing has been a big waste. And I've found through the years that a lot of small businesses and in dance studios, we're, we're in that category, fall short on this point because they leave it up to their front desk staff or people. They don't really train them. They don't really help them, give them the tools, give them the dialogue. Do they, do they know the right questions to ask? How are they going to sell your program? Because if they don't really, if you leave it to them, then you really can't complain about the results. And here's the other thing. If you look through your phone messages or you look through emails or, and you see, you know, okay, over the last year we've had 100 inquiries and we've, you know, we've only gotten 20 to 30 of these people or 40 of these people to actually come and be a part of our program. It's not too hard to figure out where the problem is there, folks, right? The problem is your front desk or how you're selling your program. So this is really, really, really important right now that we get our people in the right mindset on how to sell. Because I love that image there of the ducks, right? People, parents want to be led. People want to be held by the hand and led. Even people who are resistant and don't know you, they're new. They still, once they decide, yeah, okay, I'm gonna buy from you. They want to be led. People want to be told how to buy from you, where to buy from you, right? The famous one of, of selling and upselling and, and being able to sell, of course, is McDonald's, right? You go in, you buy, yes, I'd like a, uh, a Whopper. Okay, do you want a, a fries with that? Okay, what about a drink? Oh, yeah? You want to now, not that I've been to McDonald's recently, but you know, you want to supersize it? Yeah, okay. What about, what's the other thing that they have? The, uh, the, the, the ap apple pie thing, what is that? The, the pie, you know, you know what I mean, the little, ap I don't remember the name of it. You want a, the apple pie with that as well? Sure. So they, they know customers want to be talked through it. I'd be even willing to bet that, you know, your, your internet provider, you call them up, okay, well, yes, you want higher internet speed, you want the, people, they want to be walked through it. People will follow, even the resistance ones, even the one, parents who call and say, yes, my, my daughter's very advanced, I need to know, you know, when your advanced point class is. Okay, well, how old are they? Six. Oh, oh well, what, what? So people need to be educated, and in the end, people want to be led. They want to be led and they'll follow your lead as long as you lead. The other thing is your front desk staff, nonverbal communication. It is not good selling positions, just saying. You know, for those of you that teach, you let your students stand around like this, no. If your front desk staff does, has nonverbal body language that is not conducive to selling, they're not going to sell. And if you're unsure, get a friend of yours who you know you can rely on or a business mentor and say, hey, just come to my studio and go through the experience or call my studio and go through the experience of acting like a new customer and then give me honest feedback. I want to know. Because if your front desk person has a frown on their face, has their arms folded, has their hands on their hip, or is totally unresponsive when someone walks into your business, then you need to have a talk with them and train them up and get them up to snuff. And if they can't do it, then I'm sorry to say, they've got to go. You've got to find people who are going to work your program and do it in an enthusiastic, energetic and passionate way because you do if you answer the phone and if you don't then you need to look in the mirror and coach yourself up all right because we've got to be at the top of our game and this type of non uh, this nonverbal body language that's negative has to exit the studio. If you have somebody dealing with your customers who's got a bad attitude or somehow is just 
just has bad body energy, you've got to either tell them you've got to step it up or you've got to step out. And stepping out is out the door, all right? So we've got to get people on the page because you know what it's like. You've been to places where you walk in, somebody's behind the front desk, and they look at you like, why are you bothering me? And they haven't even said anything. They just looked at you. And then they look down again, and they don't even acknowledge you. It's annoying. You don't like it. You're like, I'm going to spend money here. Why? Get it right with your folks, because this is going to be very, very important. And again, don't assume that, oh, yes, you know, I love uh, Jackie. She's great behind the front desk. But Jackie, really, you like her, and she likes you, but she doesn't really have a good energy. And that energy comes across whether she's meeting someone face to face or picking up the phone and saying, yes, hello, thank you for calling the Devalden Sirico Dance and Music Center. How can I help you? Yeah, you know, if your front desk staff picks it up and can answer the phone with energy, enthusiasm, and a smile on their face, they should be answering the phone. If they can't, they shouldn't be answering the phone. They absolutely should not. People can feel that energy through the phone. Don't think for a minute they can't. You know it's true when you call a place and you get a bad, bad energy from somebody over the phone as well. And the next thing is, is are you listening? And I would ask this to your, your staff at the front desk. Are you listening? Are you really listening? Listening is a key to customer acquisition. We, gotta, we have to ask the right questions at the right time. And the mission of answering the phone or dealing with someone that comes into your studio is asking a question. Not telling them, giving them too much information. Ask them a question. We're on a fact-finding mission. mission. Keep acquiring more and more information. Jot some of this stuff down if you're talking to somebody on the phone. Or you could even write it down when somebody comes in. Asking questions, then listen. Asking another question, then listen. Asking maybe one more question, then listen. OK? Could be simple questions as, thanks for coming in. What are you interested in? They'll tell you. What, uh, and they'll probably tell you the age of the child. Maybe the next question would be, well, what day works best for you? Again, you're acquiring information. Are you interested in any other style? Because again, people maybe don't know that, but you know, you, you ask them a leading question that's going to help you get into the upsell. So simple little questions like that. I'm sure you can easily construct your own questions. You can use some of that, what I just gave you, but somehow build questions and then, as we like to say to our students, put your listening ears on and just listen. When, you're, when your front desk staff or you are working with trying to acquire a new customer, your ears should be this big and your mouth should be this big. More this, less of that especially to get the ball rolling. We want to know what they have to say. So asking those questions. And the next thing is expectation. People's expectation, I think even more so now, is rising up. People just expect more. You know, when I kind of smile when people, say, when the company says, well, we have good customer service. Well, good for you. Good for you. Do you have, I don't know if your customers agree with that, but at least you do, because people's expectation of customer service now is, is at a very high level. People just expect a certain thing, and if they don't get it, they're mad, they're annoyed, they'll badmouth you, they'll say this, they'll say that. So again, we have to raise our own expectations of what we expect from our staff, from our faculty, the cleanliness and how our studio looks, all of these things now, the expectation is higher. It's a little bit higher. So, you know, is that a little bit of a, a bummer? Maybe, but you know, hey, look, now we're, it makes us raise our games, right? It makes us better business owners. It makes us better studios. It makes us better educators. It makes us better people in general because we know the expectation. I have no problem with somebody saying, okay, here's the bar for you, Steve, and even though maybe other people are gonna, gonna be here, here's your bar, you've gotta jump over it. Okay, I like a challenge, I, I'm, I'm down with that. And, and this one, I just love this saying, a satisfied customer is the best business strategy of all. Now look, we all understand, we can't make everybody happy. We just can't. 
There's a, a business right by where I live, Stu Leonard's, some of you may have heard of it, huge dairy store. They, they've now opened up, branched out, and opened up a, a few other stores in the tri-state area around Connecticut. And uh, they have a, when you walk into the store, there's a big, gigantic piece of granite, gigantic. And it says, rule number one, the customer's always right. Rule number two, if the customer's wrong, go back to rule number one. And, you know, the reality of it is, it's probably not a bad philosophy to try to live by. Now, we all know there's some people that are going to push the limits and they're going to try to do this and they're going to try to push you around or make you do this or try to do that. And, you know, you know you're, you've got to hold steady. You've got to, you've got to make sure that you're in control of your own deal. You have your hands firmly on the wheel of where you're going with your business, so you're not going to let people deviate from that. However, a good customer experience and a satisfied customer is obviously our, our golden ticket. So we really want to try to focus on a, a, a customer satisfaction. And again, I don't even know if satisfaction is enough. You know, we, we need raving customers. We need raving fans. We need people who really are invested in what we're doing because it's really important and it takes us to that next level. So now I want to talk with you about referral. And with referral uh, program, and this, this particular document, I'm happy to say, is uh, on, on, my, on the player. You'll notice on the side, if you click on it, you can, it pop, pops up. It'll be, I think, the, my name, the, the description of the class. And these two documents that I'm going to show you are available for you to be able to download at any time. This first one is a letter, and you can see it, how we do it. And it's a referral letter. It's going to go out in, uh, in September to all of our people. We call it our VIP Customer Appreciation Reward Program. And it's, it works really, really well. And again, I talked about this a little earlier on how to convert even more people in using Eventbrite. So all of our customers, we do this in September, we send them out this with then these coupons that are attached to it. And these coupons you'll also get in, uh, be able to get off of the, of the download after this program. Um, and it's very simple. They'll get this in the mail, four of these coupon, coupons with this letter. And this letter tells them how the program works. Okay, so my current customer gets four coupons. They give it to their friends. If they're, and they fill it out. You saw it has, they have to put their name and all that kind of stuff. So they put their name in, and the other customer will put their name in, the prospective customer. If a new person comes in and signs up, our current customer gets $50 off their tuition, and the new customer gets $50 off the tuition. All right, so we've acquired a new customer for $100. Now, that may seem like a lot, but you don't pay until you get paid. Let me say that one more time. You don't pay until you get paid. I like marketing like that. I'll do that all day, okay? I'll, if I know every time I spend $100, I know I've got a new customer. And most of this, and if, in case you're wondering, well, Steve, how, if you give somebody $50 off up front of it, no. The way it works is the $50 comes off their last payment. So if somebody quits in the middle of the year, nobody gets the payment, nobody gets that $50, yeah? So you're not going to lose any money on this. So it's $50 on their last payment payment, $50 on their last payment. It may sound a lot to you, maybe you tweak it down to $25, but you can easily implement this at your studio. And again, it's a great new way. Remember, you don't pay until you get paid. And this particular coupon, you'll notice on the bottom, we left it blank because you can easily now put your logo in there and use this. This is something that you can completely use for your studio. It's easy to implement, easy to use. So that's, I want to talk just about one more thing here very quickly. I know we're, we're bumping up against almost the end. Some uh, additional ways to make new revenue. You heard me reference a couple times in the beginning of the class. Uh, we do music lessons. We have piano, guitar, ukulele, bass, and vocal. We implemented this uh, maybe, I don't know, 15 years ago, because a lot of our kids, because of our proximity to New York City, 50 minutes away, a lot of kids wanted to be triple threat and wanted to learn 
how to sing and sing and dance and, and kind of focus on that Broadway uh, type uh, performer. So we implemented music and we, it's worked out really well. So if you have some space, maybe it's an office that you can convert into a music studio or two music studios or however you can do it. You don't need a lot of room for a music studio, folks. Very small room. It's one-on-one -on -one classes. You can do these you know, through Skype, you know. So there's all different ways that you can add music. If you don't have it in your studio, I would consider use the, implementing something like that. Maybe renting out your space in the morning to a yoga, uh, uh, instructor, ballroom instructor, find ways to fill up some of that dead time at your studio by increasing programming that you're doing. So I don't know if, uh, Amanda, if we have any questions of, of people coming in. Uh, we are thrilled that you're a part of what we're doing here. Uh, you can also, if you're watching this on the replay, you know, you can also still use that Q&A. You can type it in and, uh, you know, we'll be answering questions uh, during this whole time that we have, uh, you know, the platform up. Um, remember that at, uh, we do all these videos will be available for you for the next 60 days, and it's very easy for you to do. This same, you'll log into this exact same platform, and now where you're seeing, you know, live streaming, you'll click on the link, and it'll show the video player, and you can watch these videos over and over and over again. All right, folks. Well, look, I appreciate you being a part of this uh, virtual event this year. Best of luck with the fall semester coming up. We wish you a lot of luck, a lot of success. And, uh, you know, if, if, you can, if, we, if you have any questions, again, type it into that Q&A, and we'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear from you about trying some of these strategies and hearing the success you have. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the day.